So for this one, we've got a most amazing um, cut amethyst stone, which is stunning as a centre point. We've got the two mil amethyst faceted rounds and we've got 0.8 and 0.4 millimetre sterling silver round wire. And we're going to make this pendant, um, which is, it looks complicated, but it's actually quite an easy weave. And then I've just added my own chain, um, sterling silver chain, to for it to hang. Okay, I'm going to move this over to there. You also need flat nose, round nose, pliers, and a pair of cutters. And the kit is EAXC65. Okay, so with the 8mm, now I've, I've, I've got the pieces in um, gold plated wire purely because A, with the sterling silver, and I'd recommend it if you're not used to working that you also do this, um, do it in plate first because it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, um, you, you're just losing the wire, it's a practice piece. It will also... It will also, um, it'll also mean that um, you can see it slightly better on the white background. So we've got three pieces of our 0 0.8. We've got one 18 centimetre, one 20 centimetre and one 22 centimetre long. You can do them all 22 centimetre and trim. It's entirely up to you. It's just because you want the longest one on the outside then the smaller one and then the smallest one on the inside. Don't don't worry too much if in doubt, just do them all 22 centimetres. Let me get those set. There we go. So we're going to have this sort of three stage at the bottom. We're going to start off with just the two. So the two longer ones. And we're going to wrap around the middle one at the, at the base. Don't do this too tight, the V. One to V in all of them, uh, cut them in half, not cut them, don't cut them, bend them in half. You don't want it too tight because you've got to fit two lots of 0 0.4 in there. So you want five wraps. We're doing a five and two weave. Pull that wire out of the way. Three, four, five. Start off further back because trying to hold there is terrible. Then slide it down so you can see why i said don't do it too tight because you've got to get another five in there okay then we're going to add the outside one the longest one and we're going to wrap and just curve them slightly out we're going to wrap twice around both don't do it too tight because you need to get that wire through then you can pull it tight and it will fit quite nicely then five times around the base. Now at this point I would recommend you temporarily wire these together just with a scrap of a 0.4 wire because these will start moving. So we're going to go five times around that inner one again. Four, five. And then we're going to introduce the next one on the inside. So this is going to come down to the tip so again, introduce your piece of wire just to hold those in place. So you're going to do twice round the two inside ones. We're not going to wrap around that outer one at all anymore. So I'm just going to see how difficult it is without that wire stabilising them. Twice around there and then carry on with the central wire as your main one. So five times around that central wire. Excuse me. <clears throat> Three, four, five, and then twice round the two, the central and the inner one. So you want to carry that on, and that will sit there and come in. So you're going to carry that on until you've got 15 sets of the five and two. Always end when, you, when you've done your 15 sets, so you've done your five, you've done your two, always end with an extra five. So I'm going to pop that over and pull out this one. Let's trim that wire off. So ignoring the bottom half, this is what you will have. So you've got your start with your wire wrapping round, just the two. Then you've got your 15 sets there. And then we're going to... 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It looked shorter for a minute. So now we're going to take the two ends and we're going to curve them round. Just get a nice arc, but one tighter than the other. You can bend this one in. We're going to cross those two over. So just cross it out the way. And then you're going to figure of eight. Now you can see why I've I've ended with the far, five on their own. And it's just giving you that little bit of a gap now to go in. So with the figure of eight, what you've got to be careful of is not pulling too tight. So you want a nice, even, even temper, tem, tension, which weaves but doesn't pull these in. So round the one and then all the way around again. That helps anchor it so that if it does move, these don't sort of gape and, and um, go open. And then you're going to go two round the other one. Can you see how careful I'm being not to pull that tighter? We're then going to go to three on the inside and four on the outside. Because if you think about it, it's got a lot further to go to around the outside than it has on the inside. So we then go to three, keeping sure you push it down three and then four and do that until you've got about let me unroll that so you've got about a centimeter and a half to two centimeters okay then what we're going to do is curl in your wire with your round nose pliers and carry on that curve so you're pulling this around now if you get a flat bit I would just gently ease that into a nice curve and bend it so that it's not flat you can curve them when they're flat like that but you want it bended bent so that that sits um, standing proud now the reason I want that there is because if you look you've got the depth of that stone to accommodate and if you don't if you have these flat then everything's resting on the point of that stone so it kind of gives that a triangular feel to give that stone if i find something to rest it on you can see it's it's not long enough but you you get the idea it'll give that stone somewhere to sort of not be pointing straight down on okay so once we've got the curve round we now need to shape so we put this cross in for our um, gemstone so we, we need somewhere for the gemstone to sit but we also need something to stop it falling out so popping a curve so one two three four in the first four you're curving outwards after you've got all three so you've got that slight curve outwards for the first four after that we're going to curve in so you get this sort of um, eye shape almost now have a play with it because what you need to do and I'm just going to bend those out of the way for now what you need to be able to do is sit that gemstone in there so that it doesn't fall out okay because there's nothing else but these two sets of, of wires that are holding this gemstone in place once you've got that you've got your cross at the back we want to put a curve in to hold that and we're going to pop another cross so we're going to cross them back over at the back. A bit better than that. There we go. And then we're going to drop that in. So now we've got it held. Make sure these are... See how that's sort of bending up? I want it to bend that way out. So just sort of give it a little bit of a turn so that it's following the curve of that gemstone. Then we're going to curve these out as they were okay I'm just going to pop that curve in there to make sure that that's out of the way but of course you've woven that okay so just doing your coil out of the way so now we're nearly there we're nearly there so we've got our stones there but of course this can open and if that opens your stone's going to fall out so with these wires that we've crossed at the back we're going to come up and then we're going to cross over and that's now pulled that together that's now held that stone securely make sure they're nice and even at the back because otherwise it won't hold it evenly and if it turns then it's going to there we go 
if it turns it's going to um, cause it to push out let me put that in the right way there we go if it's too wide then you can ease those tighter forward okay so these we're going to cross over at the back and then we're going to fetch them in a nice curve down so this is where these will tie in so we're going to fetch it in a curve down to the bottom of that stone now you 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 haven't got a lot of extra to play with so and to get it there you want the smallest loop possible on the back of this so you can see how that's nice and secure not going anywhere make those even so round the back we just want the very tip to be bent up so you only want a few mil don't squash it closed yet because we're going to use that to, to attach it to there just about by there and then with this we're going to feed on our amethyst let me pop our amethyst on so i think i've used about 20 amethyst on it feed them on beforehand pop your wire in there and you're going to just do a few wraps one two three that has two twofold it's anchoring that wire into place i'm going to have it that side but then we're just going to go see where it's crossing this two double wrap and we're going to go in there and that will lose that wrap you won't notice it and then back around your core now we're just going to feed on and wrap the um, rounds onto it so we're just gonna do a slide your first round down and this is why you put them on first come round to the front slide your next one round hold it in place go all the way round to the front put your next one down now when it gets to the point where it's meeting that loop I'm going to pop that one down and I just want to feed it in. Now, if you go that way, can you see how I've done that without actually taking it off the reel now and I'm still in the same place? Just lock that into place and carry on until you're almost at the bottom. When you've got to the bottom, we've got this little loop and just use that to wire it onto that. If I take this one here you can see where I've just wrapped those two together and then you can squash that shut and it will crimp that wire into place. And that is how you, all you've got to do. Jump ring across that cross at the top to allow you to put that chain on. And there's your pendant.